Thanks for watching this video. I'm um, Kelly McLean with KMS Performance and we're here to talk about LTR450 shift pin. Now, the LTR450 shift pin, let me brief explain what the problem is. Okay? The shift pin is actually what locates your shifter on the bike. It's got a threaded section that goes into your case and here's your case. Now, Suzuki basically made the casting in the case uh, fairly thin um, and in some other cases the pins actually work their way loose and actually fail within the case leaving the thread section in your case damaged. Now um, this actually connects up to a shift lever that goes all the way across and your foot is applied. Common symptom as the shift pin is working its way loose is literally you'll notice that on the shift lever itself there's going to be a lot of play. Okay, so the problem is, is basically if someone is landing with their foot on the shifter or that the actual pin itself is working its way out of the case, the pin can actually fail, thus leading us to requiring a fix. Now, if the case ever fails, it will leave you with a set of broken cases. Factory Suzuki recommends that you replace the cases. However, there have been a couple products on the marketplace to go ahead and fix this dilemma without replacing the case. Uh, they're typically called shift pin relocator kits. Okay. Uh, logical solutions range from uh, first one would be to fly to Japan and throw your bike at them. That's not the logical solution. So what we need to do is actually come up with a fix. Okay. Um, falling within the lines of the shift relocator pin kit is basically what they're going to do is they're actually instead of the pin installing into the case they're reversing the actual direction of the pin creating a mounting bracket system. Let's go over and take a look at a set of Suzuki cases and see uh, what we can do. Now we have a Suzuki LTR450 engine right here. What I'm going to do is actually going to show you the function of the shift pin. The shift pin, it's always installed right here. Okay. Now this is the section of the Suzuki case that is thin in this area right here. This is the section that normally breaks or the threads actually get destroyed and the cases would need to be replaced. The logical solution instead of replacing the cases would be to reorient the pin so it fits this way so the shifting arm that rides on it would actually gain support from the other side. This would allow you to make a reasonable fix without replacing the cases. Okay, so to make this bracket, the first step we're gonna have to do is, is we're gonna have to take the cases over and have the coordinates um, measured on a coordinate machine to make sure the accuracy of the bracket um, when it's said and done is going to be in the right locations. The points that we're looking at to support from is gonna be this boss, we're going to need to know the location of that hole and the depth of that hole. We're also going to need to coordinate these two holes as well. Now, quick note, some shift pin relocation kits delete the OEM arm. Now the OEM arm looks like this. This arm is actually designed to support this bushing. It is a necessary piece because, one, this bushing, if I can roll the transmission over here, has an oil passage underneath it. If this oil passage is exposed, it'll actually, you'll lose oil pressure to your transmission. Second, if this bushing is allowed to move, as you're riding your bike, the bushing will machine itself into the back of your clutch basket. This is not a good scenario with engines that spin at 10,000 RPM. So what we need to do is we need to come up with an idea on how to reincorporate this earpiece as well as relocate the shift pin down here. Okay. The purpose of this project is to come up with a cost-effective solution. What we're going to do is we're going to do the down and dirty, how to get her done, and basically get this thing fixed at the most reasonable price levels. So we're going to go ahead and take a set of cases over to gear one, and we're actually going to use our coordinate machine to get these this point, this point, and as well as these points coordinated so we can draw an AutoCAD. All right, we just got back from gear one. We got the coordinates that we need, so now we just went ahead and drew up the parts that we need in AutoCAD right here. So as you can see, we drew a replacement bushing support as well as the lower support to relocate the shift pin. 
Now, because these parts are very two-dimensional parts, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and have a water jetting procedure done to manufacture these parts for us um, to get us started on this project. Okay, so we just got back from the water jet people, and basically they manufactured two parts for us. This part is going to be our bushing support, and this is actually going to be the section that relocates our shift pin for us. Okay, now the water jetting procedure basically only cuts in two dimensions, so we have flat pieces of uh, material here. So here's a steel part, and here's an aluminum part. So if you look at it, this is actually going to support our bushing, and this is actually going to go ahead and relocate our shift pin. Now we're going to go ahead and um, I cheated. I already stopped at the machinist. So we're, we made a quick stop at the machinist, and basically he did some light machining operations for us. He gave us the threaded section for the shift pin, he gave us two countersinks, and we flip over the part and he gave us a relief to accept this plate right here. So now these parts can actually fit inside this motor, as so. Now, one of the purposes that we're doing this video is basically to explain a little bit about the R&D process, um, how people come up with products and how you know they are marketed. Um, it's always most important to think about the logical part of the situation, you know, what's going to be the most logical, cost-effective solution to cure the problem. So let me go ahead and show you the invoices as far as exactly how much this product costs. Now if you actually look down over here, we have, um, you know, a steel arm, we have an aluminum piece that's got some light machining to it, so this is water jet and water jet plus machining, plus we stopped over at Ace Hardware and picked up some hardware that we're going to need for the project. The hardware is actually a 6x15 coupler nut, we have two uh, 6x16 countersink screws, we have two 8mm washers, and we have a 6x16 bolt. Okay. Now here's the receipt from Ace Hardware, it's all crumpled up, so I wrote down, it's roughly about $2 worth of hardware. Um, right here, here's actually the receipt from the water jet people. Um, Basically, uh, the washer was a different part that I had to pick up for a different job, but anyways, uh, water jetting, the bushing arm, they were $3.50, so this steel part was $3.50, and then water jetting the adapter, which is the aluminum part, was $6, okay, so that cost is the water jetting process plus the price of the material, so we have, uh, let's see, $9.50, okay. And then we stopped over at the machinist, and our machinist actually charged us $2.50 per machining each side of the aluminum right here. So that is $2.50, okay? So the total cost is $9.50 plus $2.50 plus about two bucks. I know how to add, right? So we have $14 for the product. Okay, so basically, the ship pen relocator kits that you're buying on the marketplace are not very expensive to make. Um, at KMS Performance, we always do a standard. Uh, the standard is basically we go in and we try to work on the logic part of the problem, uh, try to come up with the most cost effective solution. And then when we're all said and done, what we do is we take the cost to manufacture the product, we put a 40% markup on that product and then we do another 30% for retail sales. So it ends up being right around 81% uh, You know, when you're all said and done. Um, on this project, what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna do the cost of the product uh, times uh, 1.4, which will be like a wholesale price, and basically the proceeds of the, uh, basically the sales of this product will actually go towards helping uh, Buck Forest, which is actually one of our sponsored racers, help fix the uh, the damage to his engine from a, another manufacturer ship pin relocation kit. So um, the total cost is we're, we're going to sell these things out is $21. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for your time. And now I'm going to go ahead and shoot the install portion of it.